Hello everyone. Welcome to the day 5 of Python series. In today's session, we'll be learning about looping statements in Python. So let's see the agenda for the session. First, we'll be talking about the looping statements in Python, that is while, do while, for loop, and then we'll be performing a hands-on on different looping statements. So that's all with the agenda. Let's start the session now. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Now let's take a look at looping statements. So a loop is a process in which we have a list of statements that execute repeatedly until it satisfies a condition. So let's say that I want to print something 50 times. Instead of me having to write it one time and then copy and paste it 50 times, what I can do is I can instruct my Python program to repeat something or repeat printing something 50 times and that way when the condition uh, the condition that is satisfied is that it has this statement been printed 50 times if it has then we print that if uh, not if it hasn't been uh, satisfied then we keep on looping and keep performing the task that is inside the loop and if we have satisfied the condition then we exit out of the loop and move on to the next statements so there are many kinds of looping constructs the first thing is we have a for loop so a for loop basically allows us to write code in which we can basically iterate over a, a lot of things so this is what the flowchart looks like we take a look at the variable and we check is there a variable in the list and if it does not have any variable that are remained to be performed the task on then we perform the rest of the code else we perform the statement we move on we perform the statements we move on and we keep doing that over and over and over again this is where the looping statement comes in, comes into play so then we and we'll have an example of this when we're performing the hands on so don't worry if you don't understand it as of now then comes the while statement so the while condition is something that is also used in loops but the fundamental difference is while loop is used to loop over a bunch of statements in which what we're trying to see if there if, if a particular condition is true or not instead of looping over a particular uh, list of things we can just use a while loop and uh, loop over uh, some things until a specific condition is true so here what we're doing is we're setting a variable a to one then we're checking whether a is less than five so one is less than five we print one we add two to a so a is 1 and 1 plus 2 equals 3. So now a is equals to 3. Is 3 less than 5? No, it's not. So the condition evaluates to false and we print it. So we print 3. We add 2 to it. 3 plus 5. 3 plus 2 is equals to 5. So a is now uh, containing the value 5. We check whether 5 is less than 5. That's obviously not true. a is equals to 5. So we end the loop. And since there are no other statements left to be uh, executed, we exit the program. Now, when we're looping, there are certain keywords that help us in the loop. These are break and continue. So what do they mean? Well, the break keyword allows us to end the loop prematurely. So let's say that I have a list of names. Let's say that I have a list of names from a list, a list that contains alphabets from A to Z. What I want to do is I want to print everything in the list. But if anything, if the character in the list is D, then I want to stop the loop. I want it to not continue any further. I want to just uh, exit out of the loop. Anything after that is not going to be printed. So this is where the break statement comes in and it's coupled with an if statement. And we'll take a look at this in an example when we're performing the hands-on. But now just understand that if you want to, if you have a condition in which you want to exit a loop abruptly uh, uh, or prematurely before the loop has actually ended, then you can use the break statement. The continue statement on the other hand does something quite similar. So you can take a look at the break flow chart as well if you are uh, un uh, unfamiliar with what it's doing. Basically we check a condition and we check the break condition. If the break condition is true then we break it and loop exit the loop. If the break condition uh, is not true then we continue with the loop as long as possible. Again this is a bit esoteric so I'll explain it in the hands on when we're performing it with the code. Then comes what we'll try to do which is looping and using continue so continue does something similar to break but instead of 
breaking the entire loop what we do is we skip over that loop so let's say that i am again do, doing the same thing a list containing all the alphabets from a to z i want to print it they are ordered in any way that you like what we are doing is we're taking a look at the alphabets and we're printing it on the screen but if the alphabet is d then we don't want to print it we don't want to perform anything that's being done to other alphabets so what we do is we take a look at it we see okay uh, if the current character is d then we use the continue keyword and we skip over the rest of the statements that are used to execute the loop and we just move over to the next next uh, character so that's what continue does and now we'll take a look at a hands-on in which we'll be performing uh, tasks using all the keywords that we have discussed as of now let's take a look at some loops so again we are in our app.py file and i'll write some code for you to run to understand loops so we'll take a look at for loop and while loop the first thing i'd like you to see is we're going to be printing a number from 1 to 10 so let me just show you so this is a classic example of loop for x in range range is a pretty common function used in python if you've never used it get uh, i i would suggest getting comfortable with it it basically means i'll explain the code in a moment so what we're doing here is we're instructing python that hey i want to loop over something every time the loop uh, iterates i want the value to be stored in x and what i want is the range to be going from 0 to 10 minus 1 which is 9 always remember range is exclusive of the end so if i were to type 11 that will go from 0 to 10 so that is done now what happens is when i print x what it will do is it will start ranging from 0 so it takes a look at 0 prints 0 goes 1 increments it by 1 goes to 1 prints 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and it goes to 9 prints 9 and then it is out of range so it stops abruptly so let's see if i were to run this as you can see it's printing but uh, let me show you a trick uh, when you're printing something type the end equals comma right so in space so now if i print this instead of each thing being printed on its own line what's happening is it's going to print it uh, with a comma and a space between the next element as you can see that's the reason why this is there's a comma and a space here as well if you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts. So that is done. And uh, so this is how you loop over a range. But let's say I don't want to loop over a range. Let's say that I want to loop over a list of numbers. So again, nums equals one two three four five right or if you remember with comprehensions x or x in range zero to ten now we have all the numbers that we had and for each number we are uh, looping over that now that that is done one thing i can show you is after looping we can take a look at some of the statements that we had learned earlier so break and continue so let's say that i only want to print till four let's say that this is a shuffled list and uh, i want to break the loop and not print four so if x is equals to equals to four then break else will print So I do this 0, 1, 2, 3, it encounters 4 and since the condition is satisfied, executes the break statement, gets out of it and the program is not ended yet. If I want to type something below it, I can type like this, done and it prints it there. What's happening here is I have uh, just, as soon as I encounter the number 4, I just quit the loop. So everything that's after 4, it's not uh, being executed in the loop. If I change, break to continue notice what happens so we have 0 1 2 3 4 is skipped then we have 5 6 7 8 9 so what happens it takes a look uh, takes a look at the number it's 4 and we continue we say we don't want to print 4 we move ahead so this is this is something that can be helpful let's say that you're trying to print something out of a list and you don't want to print the name of people whose salary is 
less than let's say 40k so what you can do if person uh, let's say that uh, for each uh, x zero index is uh, x dot salary is less than 40 then continue so this would have the same effect as it did earlier this is what it means so this is where, where we uh, move on to the while loop so let me just define a number a is equal to 10 and instead of 4 we'll use a while loop while a is not equal to 0 print a and then a minus equals 1 so if I run this it prints numbers from 10 to 1 in the reverse order so what do you think uh, is happening here so basically I have defined a variable named a and I'm checking whether or not it's equal to 0 if it's not equal to 0 then perform this task one thing that you need to make sure is uh, if you're trying to check whether something is equal to something and if it's not then you need to manipulate it inside the loop if I don't do this then this will run forever as you can see it's keep print is going to keep printing on 10 I've interrupted it using control C I don't want it to run forever so if I do this then it understands how to do this but it will take a look at the number it's 10 print 10 and in decrement 1 it becomes 9 9 is not equal to 0 print 9 go ahead remove 1 8 not equal to 0 print 8 7 and this is how we go till 0 we print uh, 1 then we in decrement 1 which becomes 0 and we take a look at this so we go okay is 1 equal to is 0 equals to 0 that is true so we this statement evaluates to false which is not equal to 0 so what is happening is we are printing the things until this statement becomes true and when a becomes 0 this statement uh, this statement becomes false and we move out so as long as this evaluates to true our loop is going to continue while or you, another way of reading is while this is true keep executing whatever we are executing so that's a while loop now why use while loop over for loop there can be many scenarios where you want to use for loops I like using for loops mainly when uh, mainly when as you can see if I can uh, travel back in time yeah so mainly I like using for loops when I have a list of values something that I can easily access in a loop like this this doing this with while loop would be a little difficult let me show you how so I would need to have an index start it with zero and check while index is not equal to the length of nums minus one that is one way to do it or you can check if while index is less than nums value minus one i will print nums the value is at index and i will index plus equals one if i run this again it will do the same thing but I had to write a lot more code and I have to keep track of this index variable uh, similarly uh, Python's for loop does all of this behind the scenes for us so we don't have to manage these external variables and all that for, for us there's advantages to this but if you want to uh, make uh, if you want to have access to the index variable then you can use a while loop or you can lose a clever for loop as well but uh, for most scenarios when you have a list of values that you can iterate over using for loop is better and when you have working with a specific condition then using a while loop is better so it's completely up to you it's your choice uh, whatever feels the right tool for you you can use that but uh, i would certainly recommend using for loops for iterable statements right if you want to make a career in data science then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.